Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. One could argue that Larry Page was destined to impact the world in a big way. The son of Carl and Gloria Page, who had a PhD and master's in computer science respectively, Larry grew up in a scholarly environment that accelerated his development. While kids in the late 70s were reading comics and playing with Star Wars action figures, Page was reading technical magazines and working with computers that his parents would bring home. By age seven, he was well adept at the Exidy Sorcerer computer, using it for his elementary school homework, turning in printouts from the computer's word processor, which was incredibly unusual in 1980. At 12, he studied Tesla's biography with fascination. After that, he came to the conclusion that he would have a better chance of changing the world with his inventions by starting his own company. Ten years later, in 1995, Page's plan would begin to unfold when he woke up from a dream with a vision to download the World Wide Web. At this point in time, the web was just five years old with less than 24,000 websites, but it was doubling every year after that. And this was well before broadband and the internet experience would be unusable by today's standards. And search engines at the time were clunky and did not produce good results, creating a painful experience. Users would often have to sift through pages of links to find a relevant website. And outside of battling unwanted spam and adult websites, the search industry's interest in improving search engines was minimal at best. And this brings us back to Page's vision. His idea was to download the web, also known as web crawling or web indexing, which in and of itself was not new. However, Page wanted to index the web differently by focusing on the backlink structure of the web. Backlinks are simply links from one website to another. Page realized that websites with more backlinks pointing to it were naturally more reputable than sites with less. And this would make search results far more accurate compared to existing methods, which simply ranked websites based on how many times the search term appeared on the pages. But achieving this would require developing a sophisticated algorithm and a tremendous amount of computing power. To help with this endeavor, Page turned to his friend at Stanford, Sergey Brin. Brin was already working on a similar project at the time, which was data mining the web. He was just as brilliant as Page and also came from a lineage of scientists. His grandfather was a math professor and both parents were mathematicians. By March 1996, Page and Brin began crawling the web using a URL server and up to four web crawling systems. The system was able to retrieve over 100 web pages per second at peak performance. They also began working on their search engine, which was written in Java and Python. Their work resulted in the now famous PageRank algorithm that ranks search results based on backlink reputation. Their friends Scott Hassan and Alan Sternberg were recruited to help with the project and proved to be instrumental in its development. Page's web crawler demanded more and more of Stanford's resources, and Page and Brin were continually harassing the computer science department for more resources. They even went as far as one day sneaking onto the computer science department loading dock and taking some computers that were being delivered. By August, the crawler indexed 75 million web pages, amounting to 270 gigabytes of content. Then they released the first version of the search engine on the Stanford website, taking almost half of the university's bandwidth. The engine was called Backrub, and Page and Brin did what they could to keep it a secret so their ideal would not be stolen. At this point in time, Page and Brin found themselves at a crossroad. Should they turn Backrub into a business or complete their PhDs? They turned to Stanford professor Jeffrey Ullman for help, who introduced them to angel investor Ram Sharam, who was well connected in the tech industry. Sharam was impressed with Backrub, but didn't think there was room in the market for another search engine. He recommended selling their technology to an established company. It's safe to assume that no one knew the extent of the engine's potential, not even Page and Brin. With completing PhDs in the back of their mind, they set out to sell their engine. They met with a handful of companies including Excite and Yahoo, two of the biggest brands in search at the time. 
Excite was actually very close to buying the search engine for a mere $1 million, but Excite CEO George Bell backed out of the deal, ultimately leading to one of the biggest blunders in history. Yahoo co-founder and CEO Jerry Yang was very impressed with the search engine, but weird as it sounds, it worked too good. You see, Yahoo's business model at the time centered around being a destination and generated more money the longer users were in their platform. Having a better search engine would hurt this model. And that is when Sharam realized that Backrub was a disruptive force waiting to be unleashed. In September 2008, influenced by the encouragement from Professor Ullman, Page and Brin changed their name of their search engine to Google and founded their company. Google's first office was in Brin's two-bedroom graduate housing that he shared with his roommate. The first employee they hired was fellow Stanford PhD student Craig Silverstein, who would go on to create many of the original IT components that supported Google's growth. Silverstein accepted stock in the company to compensate for a low salary. Money was tight for the young company, but not for long. Sparked by the realization of Google's potential, Sharam invested $250,000 in the company and brought in the Calvary of angel investors, one of those investors being none other than Jeff Bezos. Now with money to operate and Stanford's finest minds, Google began its voyage to becoming the juggernaut that it is today. And as we end this video, it's worth pointing out that Page's idea for PageRank was no doubt groundbreaking. However, he was not the only person to think of that concept. Professor Jonathan Kleinberg out of Cornell University published a paper with almost the exact same idea one year before Page and Brin published their work on Backrub. Indeed, it took a lot of external forces for things to turn out the way it did. It took the encouragement of Professor Ullman to forego obtaining PhDs and go into business. And it took the mistake of Yahoo and Excite not to purchase Backrub. And finally, it took the support of Sharam and other angel investors to keep Google afloat at the early stages. But the fact remains that Page and Brin built a trillion dollar company, thanks to Larry Page's trillion dollar idea. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe and I'll see you on the next journey.